Hello, welcome to Lawrence Academy Screencast on Greatest Common Factor. So, our first example here, we are finding the greatest common factor for 12, 48, and 120. Greatest common factor is the number that's the largest that divides evenly into all of them. So we notice that they're all multiples of 12, so our greatest common factor will be 12, because 12 is the largest number that can go into 12, so we couldn't possibly have a larger number. And we know that 48 divided by 12 is 4, and 120 divided by 12 is 10, so they all go in evenly. Now our second example here, we have 54, 18, and 45. And we have to think, what number divides into all of those? And if we think about that for a minute, our greatest common factor should be 9. Now, if we divide each of these by 9, we get 6, 2, and 5. And there aren't any other common factors in 6, 2, and 5, because 6, 2 are even. 5 is odd and a prime number. So we are done. Our last example has variables as well. So we look at our numbers first, and we say 36, 24, 18 all have what in common? We think about that for a little bit, and we're going to say, okay, they're all even, so I know that they at least have a 2 in common. So I'm going to start with a 2. If I divide all of them by 2, I have 18, 12, and 9. And looking at those, I say, wait a second, there's also a 3 that they have in common. So I'm going to multiply 2 and 3, then we have 6, 4, 3, no more common. So we know that the number for the greatest common factor is 6. We could have seen 6 right off the start, but in case we don't, that's how you do it. Now we're going to look at the variables. Now we're going to say, okay, they all have an x, so I know I have at least one x. And because there's only one x here, I can't have any more than just one because it's not common between all of them. Y, we have 3, 4, and 2. So all of them have at least two y's. So we're going to say y squared. And then there is no z in the first one, so I can't have any z's. So my answer for greatest common factor is going to be 6 x y squared. Then we have to factor out the greatest common factor. So if we look at our first example here, we have 35 x squared minus 21. Now knowing what we know before, our greatest common factor is going to be 7 x because 35 and 21 are both divisible by 7. And there's two x's here, one x here, so I take one out. Now when we factor out a greatest common factor, we have to use parentheses to distribute it back. So what do I have to multiply 7x by in order to get 35x squared? Well, 7 times 5 is 35, and x times x is x squared. Then we have a minus, and what do I have to multiply 7x by to get 21? That would be a 3. So factoring out the greatest common factor, 7x, we still have to multiply it by 5x minus 3 to get that same answer that we started with. Then our second example starts with a negative. We never want to lead um, with a negative, so we're going to factor that negative out. So we're going to say, okay, negative, and then what number goes into 36, 54, and 24? Hmm, well, if we remember our previous slide, we know that that would be 6. So we're going to say negative 6, and then we are going to do y, and that is it. So then what do I have to multiply negative 6y by to get negative 36xyz? Well, that is going to be a positive 6, and then xz. To get a positive 54, I'm going to have to multiply by a negative 9x, because I need that x there. And then to get a negative 24, I need a positive 4z. So my answer, negative 6y times 6xz minus 9x plus 4z. And that is the greatest common factor factored out. Remember, we don't want a negative starting in this number. So we always pull the negative out to the first term, okay? 
So I'd like you to try these on your own. Factor out the greatest common factor for number one, negative 300x plus 200y minus 500. And number two, 38x to the fourth y to the third z plus 24x squared yz squared minus 28x squared yz.